No, I'm um, just uh, got my yield map here from the paddock that I would like to put our new soil moisture probe in and weather station, and I'm just looking to get some advice on where I should be putting that. Um, I selected this paddock because we can we found like some pretty big variations in it, which we're trying to make uh, some management decisions around. Um, this, yeah, just trying to figure out where to put it. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have any advice? <laughs> well, certainly by um, getting a yield map from from one year is certainly a, a, a benefit. Um, I think you've probably got a pretty good idea how the the paddock performs over a range of seasons. But to get some some yield data from one year is good. We get some more overlays of, of other years on a range of rainfalls, um, that'd be even better. But obviously just what we can see from, from last year is there the green zone, um, some high yielding areas compared to yeah, something that's a bit more average. So yeah, obviously there's some variation across the paddock and then we can start to narrow into a better uh, placement for the probe. Yeah, so I, I guess in, in this, uh, example, our lower yielding areas were our um, black vertisol heavy clays where we um, see that they're underperforming in drier years and then performing better than the other the other soil type in, in uh, good years. So we sort of get that flip-flopping effect and probably that's, that's the area where we're trying to make management decisions on more that more so than the other area i guess um as yep. as it as we go throughout the season on nitrogen and or hay cutting in those types of those kind of decisions so i think yeah that's where we want to put it on the black on the black soil up, up near the up near the sheds there yep and that black soil is that a, a fair component of your farm or for this block so what we're looking to get is that that it's obviously uh, the moisture probe is measuring such a small point, so you're just trying to um, you know really refine that placement. So uh, you talked about vertisol, um, you might have an idea of the water holding ability, but yeah, the the probe's certainly going to provide some greater insights into the water holding ability at the different zones because it will have eight sensors every ten centimeters, um, and I think that's just a great way of improving your knowledge of this vertisol if that's uh, a, you know. A component of your soil that yeah covers um, yeah. a large component of your farm. Yeah, so uh, on the home block, um, that is a large component of our soils. There, um, we have yeah two distinct soil types of a uh, heavy river clay and uh, black vertisol. So I think yeah that when we're trying to make decisions, it's generally on the black vertisol though, as the other the other soil. Uh, is prone to flooding as well, so mm -hmm. um, yep. yeah, it's a bit harder to yeah to predict whether we're going to get a flood or not. So, but the black fir soil doesn't go under water, so we can still harvest that in the majority of our years. So, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. And from here, I can see there's a um, you know some tree lines as well. So we've got uh, potentially about 15 meters of cable um, to connect the probe up to the the um, communication unit so uh, as we've seen a lot of years the influence of trees so um, we're just going to probably expend, extend out 50 metres so yeah you're just probably looking to avoid any treed areas um, as one obvious one. Um, the other thing I can see is there's some, there's some structures um, pretty close by if you're sort of looking to target this area here so you probably want some accessibility so you can just go and you know check the the monitoring site, if you've got the, the weather station um, there as well, you just want to provide some maintenance to that um, periodically as well. So so that's, yeah, that's looking, you know, for, for a soil type um, that you um, have got a reasonable understanding with and um, an area that's, uh, yeah, free of trees and, 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 and not as likely to go underwater as well. So yeah. it's ticking quite a few boxes there. Um, like we're on controlled traffic and um, where where yeah potentially would like to come off this fence um, where there is no trees and there's no turning of headlands as well so it's on a straight fence uh, yeah which we don't do any turning of, yeah. of implements on to get that yeah good understanding us I guess yeah um, so um, no compaction issues or uh, less chance of compaction. 
Uh, also just coming off the fence line is generally where there could be an increased incidence of, of weeds as well. So if we can yeah, move off the fence line um, uh, d d to a distance, um, that's ideal. And I'm not too sure that you've got stock or not, but yeah, some guarding around that telemetry unit yeah. um, to protect those cables from any chewing activity um, would be beneficial as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, sort of get it, we may be getting two soil moisture probes as well and um, looking at doing paired sites and those yeah. types of things. So yeah, I was just um, wondering whether I should be putting it in the same paddock or on the same soil type in another paddock. and getting that crop rotation effect. What yeah. Yeah, so. Well, with a paired site, that's um, yeah, two probes uh, in different paddocks, but obviously they're connected up to the same communication device, so they're not gonna be too far away, but they can certainly fast track your your learnings and understandings of just um, you know, how different crop types use, use moisture, because they certainly do use moisture at, at different volumes um, and at different times, so. And um, uh, yeah, hay crops, uh, fallow as well. So it all comes into the mix of, of fast tracking if you've got a paired site. Obviously you can't pair it up if you're going near any trees. So yeah, if there's um, yeah, cropping happening both sides of a fence line, that provides you options of uh, pairing up in the future. But probably, you know, you walk before you run with these sort of scenarios, um, you know, monitor your, your, your preferred point, um, but just have the, the scope and the capacity to expand in the future. And um, when we go to do uh, the installation of the soil moisture probe, um, so we'd like to take some soil testing as well and just to get a better understanding of that soil at that specific location so we can yeah work out the drivers of the soil moisture probe. If you, had any experience in um, yeah what what I would test for and those types of things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So even before the install, you could do a, a soil core and and have a look at the soil and make sure you know it, it is the the soil type and there's no inconsistencies that you you might might have been unaware of. Um, you also take into account you know any subsoil constraints that, that may be there as well. But yeah, um, having a, a soil core and just examining what's happening to depth is, is valuable. So it could be done at the install time or, or prior. And I'd also recommend that you know once the probe is in the ground and, and working and functioning, that you validate the data at least you know once or twice during the growing season so you can match up where the moisture appears to be by the sensor data. And um, you know, just hand texturing just to find out where it's wet, where it's dry and where that moisture line is. Yeah. Yeah. And and I've heard various reports of uh, how long the soil moisture probe takes to settle down and get an accurate reading. Um, yeah, have you got any yeah, information about when I'll get uh, some data out of the probe? Yeah, yeah, I think there's um, two components of that in terms of information. You can certainly get um, informative information within a couple of weeks. So once this slurry um, equalises itself, um, with the surrounding soil, you'll get an idea of where moisture is and where moisture is not, and that can be validated with the soil cores as well. So I guess you, right from the start, you can get an idea of um, the percentage, I guess, in, in terms of the depth of where the moisture is. Um, but to get sort of that uh, decision-making information where you've got an understanding of your upper limit, lower limit, yes, that, that's probably where you can have it could take um, you know a period of time, but certainly from from the initial point of install, the information's going to be informative, um, and then progressing through winter uh, into spring, yeah, we've got to have an idea of yeah where, how deep the moisture is and and, and rooting um, depth and and where the crops are picking moisture up from. Um, and uh, we've we've also got the um, the base station that we need to set up on. On with a power source to read the data coming off the soil moisture probe and weather station. Um, I, I think we'll be setting it up on the on the the home sheds there where it's nice and high, and um, has got a good line of sight to the to the uh, probe. So yeah, just just trying to take that into consideration as well. I guess um, yeah, just trying to 
make sure we're yeah, setting up for the future if we want to install another probe uh, further away as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ability to yeah, expand um, the monitoring configuration. Um, yeah, so that communication point uh, with the blue node is uh, an important um, component because, yeah, what's communicating from the field needs to be yeah, connected up to the, to the net, so which can be then uh, easily accessed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. All right, I reckon uh, all good uh, points to consider, and um, but certainly what I've uh, noted in the past is that uh, farmers, with their historical knowledge of how paddocks have performed over many many years, um, they've certainly got a good idea of uh, you know the general location of where the probe should be. But if you can then you know refine it with any aerial view, um, yield maps, any um, EM38. 38 maps to get your, your, your soil um, components and properties, uh, they're all good overlays to yeah, further refine that um, uh, placement probe. Yeah, and, and we can overlay yeah, our multiple years of yield maps and, and get a better understanding of honing in on that specific point that we uh, want to put it in because yeah, as there is two distinct variations, there is variation uh, within those zones as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll be looking at honing in on the right spot there for installation. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I've certainly seen that um, that reference point has become such an important component because they do know, you know, in certain years how the other parts of the paddock will perform on that um, different soil type. So um, yeah. That reference point can then be expanded to improve the knowledge on, on how other soil types will perform. Very good. Thank you very much. Ah, good work.